If you're interested in how highly successful investors overcome limitations and become unstoppable forces of success, you're in the right place. The Conscious Investor Podcast features weekly conversations with real estate investing experts and delivers a Monday Mindset episode to help launch your week with intention. If you believe success is for everyone willing to think, then do, these conversations will be your weekly rocket fuel. Welcome back, Conscious Investors. I am so elated to feature Elsa this week on the Conscious Investor podcast. Um, She and I have met through Rod Cleef's Warrior Program, and that has just brought so many extraordinary people into my life. By the way, if you're not already registered for Rod's um, boot camp, it's a live boot camp. It's going to be in Denver, Colorado, so very centrally located, and it's taking place the very last weekend of July. So you don't want to miss an opportunity to make mingle network and um, really button down the hatches on all of your investing knowledge um, while having a whole lot of fun. So that's how Elsa and I met. And she is an extraordinary community builder. She has created this um, network of women that get together um, through Zoom meetings. And she's always connecting this group to other opportunities so that they can grow and increase their knowledge of apartment investing and zero in skills like on underwriting and things like that. So she's just like brings people. She's a magnet for really amazing people. So if you're listening to this and you're a woman, I think you want to make sure that you connect up with Elsa. I'm quite certain of that. But aside from that, she's also one of the most gracious, kind people that you are going to meet. And she's doing extraordinary things in the investment community. As we talk today, we're going to talk about things like nonprofits. And I'm going to ask her some questions and put her on the spot in the hot seat. So thank you. I know you're going to enjoy this episode. Let's go ahead and dive in. Elsa, I am so excited that you are here. Um, Meeting you in person last December at the Orlando boot camp was absolutely fantastic. And you just have like this magnetic energy that is just like a warm hug, you know? Um, And yet, you as, as as kind and gentle as you are, you are a force to be reckoned with, lady. You are amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Holly. That's a very, very warm welcome. And honestly, I feel the same way about you. You have such a warm personality. You radiate and you know you draw people to you. So just very blessed that we have met. And thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today as well. Well, I am absolutely excited. You have a really interesting background, and I think that more people can relate to your backstory than than people realize, because honestly, you recently put a post up that was, you know, just sharing more about some of the challenges that you had in life. And one of those was, you know, immigrating to the U.S. and not knowing any English. And I know our country is built on immigrants um, from the very get-go. And so um, I'm so grateful, you know, for for that process. But, you know, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your backstory and bring us into how you got into apartment investing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so thank you so much. So I immigrated to the U.S. in 1991 at the age of 13, and I came from Vietnam in a a very small village where we had some sort of education, but of course, you know, I was never exposed to English. So that was a challenge for me coming here and learning to speak the language at the age of 13. But uh, fast forward to 30 years, I got into, I'm 44 right now. <laughs> I, got I love the 40s. 40s are great. <laughs> 40s are wonderful. I love the 40s. Living my best year right now. So I got into real estate uh, in the late 30s. In my late 30s, starting out, I was just selling real estate. And um, and then I, I got into syndication, but it was an apartment syndication. I got into land development. And that was my first uh, syndication project was we purchased a piece of land with investors and we got it entitled. We call it pre construction mm-hmm. development because we don't build, we just take it to the approval and then we'll sell it. So that's how I got myself into it. And then the pandemic, uh, when the pandemic hit, I took a, a turn on my career at that point because uh, hospitality was 
you know, facing a lot of difficulty at the time. So I needed to look for a different assets class that could sustain my business. And um, after doing a, a terms of research, you know, multifamily is really always on the top of the list. Like every lender that I spoke to, they go, I'll fund this if it's a multifamily, but if it's a, host, if it's a hotel, then no. So that's when I'm like, I started to do more and more research and I decided to join Rodcliffe uh, Warrior Program because even though I had some syndication experience, I didn't have any experience in multifamily. And that was really the, the starting point for my life. And I love, I, I, I think that was the best decision that I've made. <laughs> there were so many wonderful people through the program, uh, partner with a lot of people that we are working on taking the youth south together right now. And it just, this, I know this is just a, a, the beginning. It's just a humble beginning, but there's just so much more out there. So I'm really excited about this. Um, it is it is so exciting, and I know um, for me it was such a it was a challenge. I knew I needed to be in, and, and with my real estate background, I love that we have something very much in common. And I hope everyone listening who's on the fence of do I join a program or not? Do I need a mentorship or not? Do I need to pay to be in a network or not? And the answer is, regardless of your background, I mean, Elsa and I both have extensive real estate backgrounds, but when you are shifting into a different um, niche, there's a lot more at stake and a, a lot more you know, <laughs> liability. And you wanna make sure that you're surrounding yourself with knowledge and knowledge from powerful you know, people that really live and breathe it and are successful with it. So um, I, lo I love that. I didn't know that you had done land development and that's super cool. It's something I'm very much interested in and in the process of right now. So <laughs> really cool. What, what are some of the things that you loved about land development? I love the, the fact, I mean, that was, I was first exposed to, I wanted to be in, I wanted to stop selling houses for people. I mean, not that I don't like it. I love real estate, but my goal right. was that I wanted to be, I, I wanted to get into development, right? I wanted to get into purchasing real estate for myself and develop. And the first syndicator that I was really connected to for the, uh, in the real estate world was a land developer. So that's how I got started into in, in that uh, area instead of you know what we're doing right now. And it was it was a great learning experience because I didn't know any you don't you don't know what you don't know. Oh my so gosh, especially with land to... development, there is so much of, that people don't understand. But with with apartment syndication, the same same same. Like exactly. you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> that way, yeah. And I remember when I when I underwrote my first apartment deal. I took the performer that I built for the land development and I tried to apply it. I didn't know there was, you know, underwriting, um, uh, underwriting software out there that we can use for under for apartments. So I use what I use for hospitality and land development and I tried to put it into this box that didn't it didn't quite fit. <laughs> what were some of the challenges with that? Just out of curiosity, what were some of the um you know, where were the numbers, were the numbers off or did it just not have enough spaces for it the, was the appropriate a, it information? Was as, yeah, it wasn't as comprehensive because that performa for the land development was actually something that I developed myself, right? So I actually wrote that thing myself because uh, it, it, I couldn't find one that I could use. So uh, it, it was, the challenge was that it, it didn't all tie in. So like, for, for us, if we were to use one of those underwriting model that was out at like Michael Blank or whatever, you just put in some numbers and it automatically calculate the return, the IRR and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, the P&L projection, where for me, I had to do it manually because I didn't, you know, with all the formulas, so like I have to do it manually. So it still work, but it just took me a hundred times longer than you see oh and it's just an underwriting spreadsheet right and uh, uh so i mean in a way it still works it's just very inefficient <laughs> right well that's really interesting you mentioned that because you know michael blanc he that was one of his challenges and that's how he 
you know, or why that was the reason why he created that SDA, you know, underwriting tool, you know, the syndicated deal analyzer, if you're listening and you're like, what, Julia throwing around acronyms. Um, that's why he was like, it's taking me forever. And, and then within that, there's even the 10 minute offer um, so that you can just get a real quick glance. Is this even worth putting the time into? So it's amazing, but but I hope everyone listening is hearing what a powerhouse Elsa is because here, here you are, Elsa, you're like, yeah, so there wasn't this tool and I had to create my own. And and I love that. That's what successful entrepreneurs do. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a it was a great learning experience, you know, whether or not it was I suppose a different real estate assets class. But um, looking back, it was never a waste of time of the journey mm -hmm. that I've been through from having my real estate license, uh, you know, doing my syndication in a different access class to where I am today. And I looking back, all those skills help. And I was, I work in corporate for a little bit of time as well. I was in accounting. So that's how I, I know how to use Excel uh, and writing formulas. So, um, it's, you know, everything that uh, to me, it, life is a learning experience. So I pull a little bit of experience that I had in from my accounting background that feed into my underwriting skill right now. My um, real estate background dealing with brokers, I use that for uh, contracts and, and deals negotiation uh, as well. And then, of course, my syndication experience in the hospitality, I use that into multifamily because we do syndication. And so all that, you know, little pieces here and there come uh, into places when we look, you know, when we look at it from a, a higher perspective, it was never a waste of time. I, I very much appreciate you bringing that to as a focal point, because oftentimes, and I'm sure you've noticed this, but there are, there are the, you young whippersnappers out there in your twenties that have access to this information and you're, you're already starting, but really there's this surge of um, investors entering in where oftentimes I hear people say, Oh, I wish I would have known about this sooner. I can't believe I'm in my late 30s or in my late 40s and I'm just getting started. And, and I love that you're, you're saying, hey, the journey prepares you for whatever it is that you're, you're going to be doing. Exactly. Yeah, 100% is all perspective, you know, when it comes out to that. And, and absolutely, like, I, I wish I knew this in my 30s or even my 20s. <laughs> It would have been, it would have, we would have been a lot more successful by now, but that's okay. Life is your journey, right? It, it is. And then, and then we begs the question, what is success? Right. And, and so <laughs> I was actually as riding, uh, as mountain biking last night and carpooling with some bikers and there's this new kid, quote unquote, you know, he's 26 and we were talking about investing and I'm just thinking, oh man, you're in such a great situation. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, 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 invest. So <laughs> this can bring us back into the mentorship program and even podcasts like this. We feed, we, we, we feed information, we give information out there freely. And this would be, you know, instead of having to spend 10, 20 years of our life learning that, you have those information ready, readily available for you. And that mentorship program comes in full cycle, right? So it's, it's, yes, you have to pay for it. But at the same time, you save yourself 10 years of learning by paying the small fee to get into, uh, get straight into the program. Yeah, I, I'd say at least 10 years. It's amazing. Well, and, and so I feel like you've actually, you know, even gotten more from the program because of the community that you have very intentionally built. So like, let's elaborate on, you know, what, what um, led you to starting the women's, you know, getting the women together and you have other communities that you're part of. So can you just talk to us about the power of building community, maybe why you started doing that, how? Yeah, so that idea came after the first uh, woman, uh, the first warrior get together in September of last year. And I saw that there were a lot of men and there were women, but nobody knew each other. And that was the first get together after COVID, I believe. So we knew each other from a uh, Zoom call, right? But when you, meet, when you meet each other for the first time in person, uh, there's still that um, 
uh, what you might call it, that separation, that strange, you know, like, okay, I know you, but I don't know you. Yes. And, and I'm like, there's a lot of women out here and I want to get to know them more. And I, I wish, you know, like we, we should have some sort of community to bring us together because there's a lot of us, um, yes. right? And as we say, you know, behind every successful man is a woman. So, <laughs> so just so that's how I came out. Uh, came up with that idea, and when I came back, I just started to message people and say, "Hey, you know what? Let's just get together, and so we can get to know each other more, whether to support one another, to learn from each other, um, to grow this business. Because otherwise, we'll we we'll, we'll, we'll probably gonna take a much a lot, a lot longer to to get through." Uh, to learn. So uh, that is kind of how I came up with the idea. There is no, um, uh, there's really no guidance, no guideline on what we should do other than just us get together and mingle and, and have fun. Um, so that was the initial idea. But then, of course, you know, I started to incorporate some more learning experience into it and inviting people to speak so that we can learn at the same time. But I think my primary goal is for us to get to know each other on a deeper level as we do life together. Are you enjoying this episode? Where would your life be without content like this? Help spread the word by sharing on your social platforms and please tag me, Happy Julie Holly. And now back to the show. I, I just love this. And it's another proof of concept that as we seek to serve other people, as we see a need and we take initiative to fill it magic happens extraordinary things take place and and it doesn't have to be centered around us um i host a lot of learning sessions because i hear chatter oh these people are asking questions about this we'll just get some experts together and and do that and it, it's just so great when we can bring people together in that way i love what you've done and and the women's breakfast um, was an absolute, such an inspiration. What you've done is such an inspiration that I was at uh, Joe Fairless's event in February and I organized a women's breakfast because I remember how powerful it was. And we did it the day, the day, um, I think the day before the event actually started and we had over 70 women there wow. and they would come up to me over the next few days. I had multiple women come up to me and they just say, thank you. Cause we were on an app. We were all communicating. And yet, just like you're saying to actually sit and break bread. And, and so I just want to say thank you because you were a role model. And I'm thinking, gosh, that really filled my heart in December. Okay. And I have an opportunity where I could, I can be the, you know, instrumental in, in helping and supporting people connect. So, and I, no doubt deals came from that for, for a lot of women there. They said, I had a couple, I shouldn't say a lot. I had a couple of women say, I think I met my business partner here. <laughs> I think a lot of good things come out of those, you know, uh, mingle time. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. Yes. I, I absolutely. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Well, you know, thinking of that, speaking of that, truly, maybe we can organize a bigger event, right? So you get the Joe Fellas event, and then we had a Rod Cleave, where we also had about 40, 50 people show up for the breakfast. You weren't there last time, I believe, but maybe we should put together a bigger event for us women. For the women, yes, and I'll be <laughs> I'll be at uh, Michael Blanc's event here at the very beginning of June, so, you know, we'll just corral, <laughs> corral <laughs> the ladies together. Because uh, it, it really is, it, it really is, is separate, it, it difference, and, and one of the things I mentioned to the to the ladies when we did a, some drawings and I did a couple of giveaways, which is just for fun. And, um, and I told him, I said, you know, Hey, but we have a uh, industry and I, I believe you feel the same way. Um, you know, that we're surrounded by so many gentlemen and such high caliber gentlemen. And that's how I refer to it. You know, like we're surrounded by, by really great gentlemen, but it's so nice to come together in this type of community and be together as ladies. So I hear you completely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm like, I, I, I very much very grateful for the gentleman that we are able to, you know, I know you have, you know, a significant number of, you know, partners <laughs> that are not ladies as do I. And so I'm like, you know, it's, it's definitely never a knock towards the gentleman out there. If you're listening, not a knock towards you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, speaking, uh, speaking of community, though, you're doing something, you're, again, 
in addition to doing this extraordinary vesting, and and if you're listening, you need to. We're not. Gonna, I don't think we're going to dive into it, but you need to go connect up with Elsa because she has deal flow. She has really great opportunities for her investors, you know, to place capital and to, you know to really beat inflation. So you want to make sure you connect up with her on that, um, and and just make sure you start that timeline, you know, so that if you are a sophisticated investor, you're starting that relationship. But Elsa. I'm so so that so everyone knows go check that out but I wanted to ask you about this nonprofit you you've started and you're you know you're growing and tell us about what's going on with that <laughs> thank you thank you Holly for touching on that so uh, I, I as I mentioned earlier I'm from Vietnam right and I grew up in a really small village which I was really really poor my family like I, I had like three pairs of clothes and uh, there were days when my my parents were fishermen and they were out in the sea fishing. So we didn't we didn't have rice to eat and I had to go borrow. We had to go borrow from the neighbors. And I was like seven, eight years old at the time. Wow. So I know how it's like to be poor. And I, you know, what God bless me with my business right now. And I'm starting to building up my, uh, you know, my bank account, let's just put it that way. We, And I feel like it's time for me to go back. Uh, to the place where I came from and help the people that don't didn't have that don't have the opportunity that I did. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now is that we're starting. I I, I partner with the local uh, a local hospital where my aunt works as a doctor, and I also partner with a local church. So we we just cook meals every week. We uh, distribute free meals to people on Monday, every Monday and Saturday. So we we do about 500 meals a week. And then the hospital, there were some volunteers that say, okay, if you need a, if you want a free checkup, come and we will check up for you to, for, for free. And then they'll give free medicine to the people. So not like if you have a cancers and stuff like that, then, then they cannot help, but you know, you get sick all the time. And so that's when they come and they offer their services as well. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm doing. And it, it's just, you know, it, uh, it's very small, very humble. But I'm super happy that I have that opportunity to be involved and to give back. Oh my gosh, that just gives me chills. You know, I mean, the podcast is the conscious investor, and investing is so much more than you know building a storehouse of you know this crazy wonderful portfolio that's you know bases loaded monetarily speaking. But when we have that contribution back to the world, it's just. Mm -hmm. That's where we go, where we blossom and fulfillment comes. And I, I love that you are doing this. Um, if people wanted to be involved, like, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, organizations, and I don't know if you have this, so I am putting you on the spot, but you know, it's like, if someone contributed, let's say, like, I know World Vision, they'll, they'll do like, hey, if you do your coffee a day, we'll send out like, so many meals, you know, and it's kind of like, why wouldn't I do this? So, you know, is there, if someone, is there a way for people to do an ongoing commitment or, you know, how, how far do those dollars reach and how, if we, if you had X amount more of dollars, how many more people could be helped? <laughs> well, I uh, think, thank you for asking that question. I don't have anything set up right now. So it just, um, I, you know, we're working, I'm just, just started to reach out to an attorney to set up my uh, 501c3 and then oh, nice. we'll start putting money into that so I can use that money. I mean, of course, I'm, you know, right now it's just me sending the money to them directly. So I'm like, I don't wow. get the task right now. So <laughs> oh, but I, but I love this because you're, I really believe in, let me, let me try this. Let me trailblaze for you and now I have the system and now come along and I love that I feel like that's such a responsible way of going about things yeah thank you so I don't have anything that you know I could share with you other than I am working on uh, my nonprofit, and then once all that's set up maybe it will be a website where you can come and visit and look at pictures and so on and so forth but um, I, I don't have anything <laughs> available right now Okay, so all of you amazing conscious investors listening right now, this is your opportunity to really get in on the ground floor of serving. So if this is something that is resonating with you in any capacity, like make sure you reach out to Elsa. And um, this is all about who, like life is all about 
who you connect with and, um, and supporting each other in different ways. So if you're listening and you want to participate in some capacity, reach out to Elsa and, and she didn't know I was going to put her on, you know, say all this, but <laughs> she might be like, I don't want anybody to reach out to me. And I, but we, I, I don't believe that to be true because of how she, she lives life. So make sure you reach out, connect up with her so that, um, you never know where that is going to go. That is so cool. Thank you. Mom. Thank you. <laughs> like seriously, yeah. seriously. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, as we are kind of, you know, wrapping up a little bit, it seems like you are living outside your comfort zone quite a bit all the time. <laughs> I mean, from seven years old, going and borrowing rice, I don't think that's comfortable for most kids to do, to learning, you know, to speak English in the middle of the night so that you keep up on your studies when you move here in 13 to, you know, pivoting into different, um, you know, niches of real estate, what is it that is, you know, kind of your internal catalyst? How is it that you're able to live outside that comfort zone? Wow, that's, that's a really, really good question. Um, I, you know, it's, it, there's always fears, you know, like I think one of the biggest thing, uh, one of the problem that everybody's facing is fears, fears of the unknown, fears of getting sick, fears of, you know, there's just so much fears out there and we create our own fear. Um, I, I, I have the tendency to take risk. I, I like to take a little bit of, of risk because I feel that when I, uh, when I live, you know, I take a lift of faith and do something, uh, the, the feeling that comes after is just amazing, right? Rather than just stay in our comfort zone. And I'm not, not saying that to say it's bad to stay in your comfort zone, but just my personality, I'm a risk taker by nature. And I got into real estate the same way. You know, I quit my W2 job and I went into real estate full time. It was a commission job and I sold like, you know, four homes the first year. So that wasn't enough to pay for my gas. But um, I went all in and that's just kind of my personality and I love doing that because it makes me feel uh, that taking a leap of faith is what life is about, right? Um, I, I allow God to hold my hand and, and lead me rather than me leading God where I want to go. So I, I, to answer your question, it's, um, it's probably faith that allowed me to uh, get into where I am right now, even from, you know, just going full time, you know, quit. It, it, I literally quit my commission job selling real estate and get into multifamily full time right now is what I'm doing is another leap of faith because I'm, you know, quitting my, uh, I'm, I'm leaving behind all the commission I would have made and get into this. And I don't recommend anyone to do that un until you know you have a, a saving enough for you to sustain a, a couple, at least a couple of years, you know, to do to do apartment investing full time. But um, exhilarating, you know, it just it's just fun, and and I, I give it all. But <laughs> so I'm like, okay, if I can do it now, I'm ready, and I just dive right in. I love it. You know what? Um, we have that very much shared, shared mindset of, um, it is my faith. It's, it's like, well, I mean, what I, I have nothing to lose. If I'm following, I have nothing to lose. If this is where God is leading, then that is where I go. It'll work out. It'll be fine. Might not be comfortable, but it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think came, came from coming from a place of, of poverty help a lot because, um, it reminds me, you know, uh, it couldn't get worse than what I've been through, right? We came, like I told my parents, my parents are always, you know, they worry. They go, what if you, you know, you quit your job and what if I'm like, mom, dad, think about how we first came to this country. We got nothing, like we get zero and we survive and we all do well right now. We have so much, I have so much more right now compared to me 30 years ago. I speak fluent, not fluent English. I know I still have broken English, but I speak English, you know, I, I, I have a, I have a master's degree, like, if all this fail, I'm just going to go back to my W-2 job, and we'll, we'll pay the bill, we'll make it work, right, so don't worry, <laughs> what's there to worry about, right, we, we've right. been the worst of it, so it's only going to get better from here. <laughs> 
Oh, I love that. I absolutely, I love that. And I wonder if there's something that there's something similar in conscious investors, I like shoot a message or drop something, um, a review of some sort and let us know. Cause I, I am agreeing with you on the sense of when you've been through some challenges in life, you know, for you, it was, Hey, I've already faced poverty and I survived that. So if I've already been there, I can go further. And I've gone through my own challenges where I thought, well, it can't get any worse. And so it does it, you know, when you see what, what those rock bottom moments, uh, maybe those are still above rock bottom for both of us, but like when you see those moments and you say, Oh, but I survived. Yeah. It does grow a little bit of courage to, and confidence to say, I can always go back and work at this other place or do this other, I can figure this out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And God will, God always is so faithful to lead the way as to next step. <laughs> he does. He, he definitely does. And, and, and that's the beauty of it is that we know that we are protected in everything that we do, as long as we're conscious of the, of the, of the call, like just allow him to lead, even though we don't know where we're going but just allow him to lead by faith. Uh, we cannot be, it's, it's, it's scary at time because we just cannot see what's in front. But looking back is what I normally do. I'm like, okay, I look back and he had always been so faithful. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, I'm just gonna have to make a decision. I just have to choose to trust him because he had proven himself to be so faithful. So what's the worst is gonna, he, he, you know, he cannot abandon me right now unless I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and even then, even then when I have messed up, I like God's never abandoned me. So I'm like, wow, well, exactly. maybe 100%. let me yeah. kind of work through it a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we pay a little bit of a consequence for it, mm-hmm. but he still carry us through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Elsa, this has just been such a fantastic time. Um, I really appreciate your time coming on and your willingness to just open up and share. And, you know, conscious investors, make sure you do drop a review, an honest review, and let us know, you know, what you gained from this episode. And Elsa, they're listening and they want to connect up with you because they're feeling an alignment. What's the best way for people to reach out and, and and connect? Um, I think the best way would probably just go to my website. Uh, it's uh, sunrise development LLC.com. And I have my email address uh, there where you, they can reach out to me via my email or just there's an info um, uh, page and they feel if they put in the information, they'll hear, they'll hear from me. That is fantastic. We'll put a link in the show notes so that it makes it nice and easy. You can just click and go. Um, But I just want to thank you again, Elsa. And I want to thank you, Conscious Investors, for taking time. There's so many podcasts available to listen to out there. And, you know, I'm trying to give you a different perspective uh, for all of the guests. You know, you hear them on other podcasts and then you come over here to Conscious Investor and you're like, wow, I hear a different part of who they are and what they're building. And so, um, you know, please make sure you share this with someone so that they can get that other uh, perspective on each of the guests that, you know, I feature on this podcast. Thank you for listening. Remember adventure, you know, I love adventure and adventure belongs on the trail, not in our investing. So make sure that you're investing really well and make sure that you're reaching out to guests like Elsa. Um, And until next time, live big, love bigger. What's the big deal about investing in apartments? Why is it better than investing in a slew of single family homes? I've compiled a lot of information on why investing in a multifamily, also known as apartments, will help you reach your investment goals. Head over to threekeysinvestments.com and download the Why Invest in Multifamily Guide today.